with you guys, uh, Eric Dubey. Uh, we're just uh, in Thailand here doing some, some yoga, some practices of uh, breathing. It's been pretty interesting. I'm having some conversations about the, the geocentric model, flat earth and all that. Uh, so, I don't know how to start this, uh, Eric. <laughs> it's been like very, yeah, cool for me to meet somebody like, uh, of, you know, of your like that, that held me opening this door of uh, Flat Earth. Of, and as a friend Guillermo Wood said in Chile, like uh, it's a door that opens or let you enter to a hall full of other doors, you know? So that's a little bit where, where I would like to, to go with this. Like, uh, like we've been doing yoga now. Uh, you taught me some pretty amazing practices of uh, the breathing. Uh, we talk also about the the food, you know, and the importance of that. So you're a vegan, and you've been vegan for a while, over a decade. Now. Can you can you tell the little a little bit of that story? How did you start? Uh, how did you start like that process of uh, taking care of your body and your health? Well, we uh, we mentioned, you know, my the very first little bit was uh, I wanted to be big and strong and yeah. I decided to do the, the thing that most muscle heads do and work out lifting weights every single day and eat six meals a day to bulk up and get as big as I could and after a year of you know following the whole weightlifting protein bashing regiment I managed to gain a whopping 15 pounds which is not much not like seven kilos <laughs> yeah seven kilos yeah um, and then I also managed to develop tonsillitis at the end of that, uh, which is basically your, your your glands in your throat swelling to the point that I couldn't swallow for two weeks. Or I could swallow, but uh, I'd have violent convulsions just from swallowing my own saliva every couple minutes. It was terrible. And so I couldn't eat for a couple weeks. I just drank liquids. And by the end of the couple of weeks, I'd <laughs> lost the seven kilos. I'd, I'd lost 20 pounds. And the wow. muscle definition, I didn't work out, and I was just dejected and feeling like I wasted a year <laughs> trying to get to a level of, of aesthetic health um, that just completely went away. And I also felt like my body was telling me, by having my glands and my throat swell up to the point that I couldn't eat anymore, basically saying, hey, this six meals a day of sausage and omelets and ice cream and just random anything that I thought would an Ameri help American diet yeah, is a standard based American on diet. that. Yep. American diet is based on uh, and it just it made it so that I could no longer swallow. It's like it's your body just telling you, nope, no, no, <laughs> I no, don't no, want no to. more of that. You're done with that. <laughs> and so, so yeah, I just had fruit smoothies and stuff for a couple of weeks, and and so that started to change my thinking about I need to look at health more holistically and not just the aesthetic part where I just I yeah. wanted to bulk up, I wanted to have the muscles, and you know I'm a skinny, lanky, tall dude, and yeah. I get made fun of for it ever yeah. since a kid, and so most people, they, you'd like to be a little bigger than you are, um, but, uh, you know, that happened, and so I started thinking about how, you know, health is a lot more than the exterior, yeah. you, know, you gotta look good inside, you gotta, you gotta, you know, worry about what you're actually putting into your yeah. body, so from there, I stopped eating six meals a day and, and eating whatever and started researching what, what should we actually be Eat. eating, how much and, and, and what. And that's when I started getting into vegetarianism and, and learning that you know you, you don't need meat for protein. So you start reducing a little bit or you... Well first or just you, researching. I, yeah, I wasn't, yeah. I, I, most people realize that the standard American diet isn't the pinnacle of health. <laughs> So there's yeah, obviously, yeah. obviously something yeah. that needs to be tweaked yeah. to there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and I actually, I mean, while I was on that, that year, I was kind of doing the paleo, keto, yeah, keto a bunch yeah. of uh, Atkins. There's a bunch of words for it. Yes. They, they make a new title for it, like every yeah. every couple yeah. of years. But it's the same thing. What it is somehow justifying like their way. Of, yeah, yeah. A high fat, low carb diet is basically what it is. Heavy yeah. on the animal products. Yeah. And what I found through research and through my own experience is that. The, the best diet is actually the exact opposite of that, which would be a high-carb, low-fat diet, low on the animal products, ideally no animal products, right. and getting everything from plant sources. Plant-based. I mean, you think of the protein that your animals get, you know, where do those animals get the protein? Well, from Grass plants or that they're eating. Plants, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it, it's actually better for you to get it from the source than to have it, you know, uh, 
go through the flesh of an animal, and then you have to break down the flesh of the animal through your digestive process to get it back to the original amino acids and everything yeah. that you can utilize in the first place. So um, it's more bioavailable to just have it that way, and it's better for the environment, and of course better for the animals. So it's kind of a, a tripartite thing. You find out eventually that not only is vegetarianism, veganism, plant-based eating, you know, even if you're not going full, yeah. lowering your intake lowering. Of, yeah. of animal products and upping the intake of plants yeah. is, is good for you. Yeah. It's good for the animals because you're not uh, breeding them into existence and causing them suffering and death through uh, supply and demand. Because basically, you know, whether you want to think of it that way or not, every time you go to the supermarket and you buy some meat or some eggs or you're dairy, supporting you're support the, the industry only exists because, because people you, are you buying fund it that way. True. And the less people that fund it, the less yeah. um, there is of it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so there's the ethical aspect, the health aspect, and then the environmental aspect, like we were saying. It takes 16 times the amount of acreage in plant life just to feed, say, one acre of animals. Uh, whereas if you were to plant 17 acres and just eat everybody ate the plants directly, yeah. you eliminate the suffering, you're healthier, and I mean, the, uh, you can have more food in less space that way. Mm -hmm. So animals actually take up a bunch of space. That's interesting to do so. And it's, so cool, it's cool how like uh, these two like concepts or like visions or somehow points of views converge in the end. Like you know, because we were talking just before of how. Because I, I asked Eric, like, uh, I, I'm pretty skinny too, as you can see, and I was like always been skinny, always trying to gain muscles or, you know, be, be, be bigger, as TV tells us, you know, since we're kids. So I was asking him, how was your, like, you know, a change or your step into, like, a, becoming a vegan? Was it through, through you, like, for, like, personal growth? Or it was it for, like, you know, the, the, the animals and the planet and... All these like outside thing that we, we put, and you said something pretty cool that it was like, hey, how do they, they both of them in the end converge in the one? Well, yeah. I don't know if you could repeat that sure. in, a, in a little bit. Well, it started for me like, like yourself. It was more a selfish thing in the sense yeah. that I wanted to be healthy and vital and, and have as much energy as possible. And obviously, from my keto paleo experiment that didn't work, I, I tried going the opposite direction and doing. Uh, high-carb, high-plant diet, yeah. and I had way more energy and was feeling a lot better on it. And so then I started researching the ethical aspect of it and realizing that basically they've been lying to us about this whole protein myth or the calcium and milk myth or the B12 myth. There's a bunch of these vegan myths where they, they've got uh, certain things that they tell you that you need that you can't get from plants. Yeah. And the more you research, the more you find that it's all bunk. You, you yeah. can, yeah. more optimally and more bioavailable often, um, you can yeah. get from plant sources. And so then you start to see like the sinister aspect of it where you're like, so not only have they been lying to me to the point that I'm eating unhealthy food and causing myself uh, to be unhealthy, I'm killing and, and causing the suffering of animals just because I believe this lie that I need to eat their flesh for protein, for mm. example. And so that, that, that or because kind of it's my culture, I don't know. Like in, here, in, in Ar there is going to be a lot of people in Argentina and Spain, like uh, watching this thing. And like, uh, I myself, I was born in Argentina, and like uh, that's the way we eat. You American, like that's the way you eat, and, and we always put this excuse, you know, like right. uh, it's the way we were raised. But it's it's interesting how once you start from a personal journey, then all the other journeys or all the other visions start like uh, complementing each other. Right. And you become, I don't know, like you become, now I'm an ethical you, vegan, you know, like at a, first it was never yeah, even a concern. I, I love my dog, I love cats, but I eat pigs and cows just yeah. like everybody else. It yeah. didn't seem like even a concern to me at yeah. the beginning. But once I actually started eating that way and was feeling the health benefits, it started to, to click and yeah. it's like, wait a minute, this, this, this is better for me. And then you and obviously it's better for the animals. Exactly. So I'll, and you learn it's actually better for the environment too. So it's like the tripartite uh, benefit that they're denying us by these few lies about protein and calcium and B12 and all these things that people believe because we've been told that, but they're, they're just not true. I mean, yeah. B12 is a bacteria that comes from the soil. You get that from plants and mushrooms just like you can from anywhere else. Calcium, they say it's in milk, but there's four times more calcium in sesame seeds than there is in milk. A lot of seeds, yeah. And of course, uh, milk is so acidic that it actually causes you to leach yeah. calcium out of yeah. your bones yeah. um, to, to 
to, to, to um, what's the word, to alkalize your bloodstream. Yeah. So, literally, um, drinking milk is bad for your bones, and you, wow. ends up, you end up leaching calcium from yourself by doing stuff like that. So, there's these myths that are, and protein, that's another one, I mean, plant protein is superior to animal protein in literally every way. Nor do we even need it, yeah. in the sense that if you're eating enough food not to be malnourished, you're yeah. getting enough protein. Yeah. Protein is not like a, a super vital nutrient that most people aren't getting enough of. Yeah, no, 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 actually, like, yeah, most of the people have enough, like, there's, like, I don't know. You have too much. That's what yeah. most cancers are caused by, uh, an excess of yeah. protein. protein. So people are actually eating too much. That's what people should be worried about is, you know, you're having too much protein, not where do vegans get their protein. We get plenty. We have enough. Um, meat eaters yeah. mostly have too much, and it's causing problems. What about, like, a... I, I know we didn't talk about this, but what about sugar? Like, is sugar a big thing too, or...? Refined sugar is not good. Yeah. Neither are, um, like, um, aspartame and some of these sugar yeah, substitutes. artificial. These, these are bad. But, uh, but fruit, natural fruit fruits. sugar, natural sugars are what your whole body operates That makes on. so much sense, or not? Because it's put it there in a plant, like, put it for you, like, uh, all the animals eat it, like, we're just another animal. Right. Why shouldn't we eat it? They're not even as bad for your teeth, like, because yeah. sugar is not so good for your teeth, but... Fruit sugar is not nearly as bad as refined sugar in that aspect as well. So, you know, it's interesting nature how has like made it. so many aspects start like a converging. Com how, is it converging, yeah, converging right? Converging, yeah. yeah, right. Like yoga too. You know, exercise. Right. Right. How yoga means union, or not? Exactly. So yeah, how it's like all getting together into because yoga is another practice that you've been doing for a while. Yeah. And it's also like in the same direction. So that's. Pretty cool, Eric. <laughs> Pretty excited then. So, wanted to say uh, ah, about the Flat Earth Football Club. Cool. What do you think about that? Oh, that's great. Yeah, uh, yeah. Responding to Javi Poves. Hi, Eric. How are you? I am come back uh, to home uh, after win the first match uh, here in Spain. Uh, I am Javier Poves, the Flat Air FC president, and and nothing. Uh, I would like to meet you, maybe in the future. Thank you so much. Um, I am maybe uh, Flat Air uh, for you, for Iro Landucci, for Oliver Ibanez, and and thank you, thank you so much. Ciao. Yeah, what's his name? Javi. Javier Javi. Poves. Yeah. Well, thanks for the, uh, the little uh, message. That was great. I um, actually just saw a documentary that John Thor put together with some of like, uh, him on stage and their song and everything. And I, was my, I, I knew th about the football club from a little advertisement, but I hadn't heard anything else about it until I saw that. And that got me pumped, actually. I was yeah. really excited uh, to see that you know, they're getting the word flat earth out there on such a big stage, like he said in that presentation. They're basically forcing all these media yeah. personalities and TV yeah. channels to say the word Flat Earth FC yeah. every time they're going to talk about the club, which is brilliant. So. And it's amazing because, uh, yeah, Javi, like the other day he was calling the, you know, the bed companies, like uh, Bed365, I don't know what, what are the names, but all these big companies that make money out of the sport. Yeah. So he called them saying like, hey, I want my club to be out of this. I don't want to be part of this, you know, gambling thing. Yeah. And then they were like, no, 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 you cannot do that. And there's a whole, a whole story about it, how you've always uh, trying to, to get the team out. But that's a, it's pretty interesting. What would be your, your like recommendation or your, I don't know if advice, but your, yeah, your, your word to all the people that follow you that, they, that were somehow initiated in this path of like a opening, opening the mind, opening the eyes to, to different possibilities. What would be your recommendation of, of the, the, the most common question? And now what, you know? And, and then what? Like, right. okay, you realize the earth is flat. You realize, you know, it's motion, motionless. You realize we've been deceived. Now what, what do we do? Right. What do you do? What, will you, what do you think is, well, I don't know. Yeah, um, it's, it's such a big, question with, uh, with many possible answers that we actually talked about a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Um, so for instance, one, one angle to approach it from is like the Taoist angle where, you know, you don't really need to do anything. Yeah. You need to be yourself and, yeah. and just be in this world with your new knowledge and just that act is already going to change the world. So you can be 
uh, confident in that without having to feel like you've got to, oh, I've got to do something, oh, yeah. I've, got to, I've got to be an activist and all this yeah. stuff. Um, you know, having said that, however, if, if your beingness feels like, uh, you know, you'd like to try to, to do some street activism or some indirect activism or, you know, Socratic questioning of your friends or maybe make uh, some videos, a documentary, you know, there's a bunch of, of traditional kind of activism that's certainly helpful and if people yeah. are so inclined to do so, it's definitely helpful because ultimately, you know, people ask me, like, do you think this is ever going to get mainstream in the sense like do you think the world is completely will ever wake up to the yeah. flat earth the only answer I can think to give to that that I always tell everyone is well to be honest the answer to that is completely and You're totally right dependent upon us yeah. I mean if it does it's gonna be because we spread the word yeah and if it doesn't it's gonna be because we didn't yeah. so there's that to consider as well like yeah. if you if you just have your own revelation and then you keep it to yourself and you never do anything to help inform the public yeah um, it, like like we talked about being I mean eventually people are gonna figure out that you're a flat earther or they're gonna yeah. they're gonna learn and you're gonna be dragged into it whether you want to or not yeah um, but if you have the energy and you have the time and you have the means there is a bunch of um, direct and indirect kind of activism that we can be doing to help yeah. spread the word. Yeah. Um, if you go to ericdubay.com, I've got an activism section full of ideas. Yeah. And I have a podcast called Solutions to the System, which has not only ideas about activism, but also like we were talking about kind of more indirect things like planting your own food, getting off the grid, trying to find a way around taxes and, and some of these uh, constrictive laws and licensing. and the free man on the land stuff as well as yeah. spirituality and health just uh, getting yourself aligned and getting yourself healthy so that you're not you know dependent on the system yes. and, and having to feed into it that way so there's that there's there's a lot you can do there's a lot but it's difficult to, to explain it in like a point by point process though yeah. if, if you're interested in me trying to do that you can find a 50 minute podcast of me trying to do so <laughs> called <laughs> solutions to the system uh, so that would be my recommendation so Eric uh, yeah that too it's the you can find it there excellent and yeah it's, it's so true about like uh, you were saying before of like it's, it's difficult sometimes to try to organize a lot of people together to get together and do something because they usually say you know like uh, divide and conquer and the opposite would be like uh, let's be let's be together mm -hmm. but uh, this fake like this fake concept of being together when it's pushed by an agenda mm -hmm. that we don't know so I like your your answer to that that you you kind of like to do your your own thing you know like just do it right just do it and, and that's what you were saying before I don't know if you like inviting everybody to to just do their own you know growth development investigation like uh, put it out there like uh, in their own way because also, there's many new ways that we don't know yet because we only know what we know. But there might be a lot of other angles to, you know, approach the subject to influence people to to move that we are not seeing yet. So I, I like that that you said that it's just, yeah, just do it. You know, like I just do it by myself, and then you do yourself, and you do your part. I do my part, and then. When we the are, unity happens that way happens just, yeah naturally like, in, individuals standing up eventually will become a unity of flat earthers you know genuine flat earthers rather than trying to congregate everyone into some named entity that we call a unity because a lot of people there's a lot of people trying to do that and and anyone that questions their unity suddenly becomes divisive and on the outside and now now they don't want unity now they want unity with everyone but you because you're asking too many questions or something yeah, like that yeah, so yeah. That ends up being the problem with this, this constant call for unity. While it, it sounds good um, on paper, the reality that we know is that there are always going to be wolves in sheep's clothing flocking into our herd, yeah. trying to bring us astray. Yeah. And so if the only thing we're concerned about is unity all the time, and we're not concerned with actually discerning uh, the wheat from the chaff, as you talked about, yeah. you could very easily get duped into Pied Piper leading you away from what you should be doing. What, yeah. So I recommend everybody's got their own strengths and weaknesses. They got their own communities. For instance, the, the flat earth football guy. I mean, he's a he's a oh, professional football player, 
you know, what would be the best thing he could do? He, he, he thought of it. He figured it out. Well, the best thing I could do with my life, you know, what I'm doing, I can create a whole football team called Flat Earth Football Club. I mean, I couldn't do that. Uh, it wouldn't awesome. be my exactly. thing that I could yeah. do. You don't know how to play soccer, maybe you don't know a lot of things. <laughs> right. But he does. And, and so that's his thing. And so thank you, Javi, and thank you to everybody. Like, you know, Iru Landucci, or like, you know, Hermano Barea, or Padma, or Guillermo Wood. Everybody, they've like... They've all got their niche. Yeah. And, and they've all got their niche communities, like the, some of the people you just said. Ramon Freire, that's another one. There's so many guys that are like, yeah. And so Sorry. find that, you know, in, in people that are looking, like, well, what can I do next? Well ask me <laughs> so so you think the trip is more to the inside yeah, and then it would flourish or it would exactly everybody's got their own thing that they can add and I'm sure even if that thing is just you know making a stamp and stamping you know All earth the, is flat on every on bill that every passes. bill yeah you know some people aren't comfortable with talking about it with people a lot of people know the earth's flat yeah, they watch videos for years but they've never said a word to anyone because they're not confident or, or maybe they tried saying a word to someone and they yeah. got shot down and they don't they don't want to go there anymore yeah. but that doesn't mean they have to just shut up and, yeah. and do nothing or they can they, create another web another I don't know translate your documentaries or like a peak information that they like and repost it or exactly. repost it under another name but it's just yeah, there's multiple ways. It's like, yeah, I agree. So the best is it is just for everybody to get creative with yourself and think, mm. what can I offer personally? Or your own story. A lot of people do that. They don't have popular YouTube channels, but they can open a new one and give their story, and that just adds to the algorithm and it adds to the potential that people are going to see, especially people in their life, whoever subscribes to them or comes across their videos. Mm. Um, so yeah, just get creative and. and in your, yourself instead of looking out there what everyone yeah. else is doing yeah. what would you like what do you think you could yeah. you could bring to the community yeah short question uh, what about like the uh, like the, the YouTube and all that uh, like do you think we should like migrate to a naturally migrate to another like a source of, or, or platform like you you done already yeah um, I mean ideally do it all because YouTube is so censored that you're probably going to get Bam. so you wouldn't want to put all your eggs in that basket though at the same time I wouldn't recommend not going on YouTube because and just putting all your eggs in that basket right, right. Yeah. Every, yeah. most people are on YouTube uh, that's yeah. the place people go for video sharing so for instance I'm on BitChute and BitTube and Library and Brighteon and uh, as many as anywhere people. I can think of to, so that they won't censor them but not many people are gonna see them but at the same time I can bring people from YouTube to the other sites so yeah. I recommend doing it all you know up upload to YouTube but also upload to some of the more secure sites that aren't gonna censor you so much that way you get it in multiple places uh, you get it in the, the main place where everybody is YouTube yeah and then you get it in the other places where at least you're not gonna get censored and so you don't have to worry about re-uploading every couple months like, exactly like <laughs> exactly so many people having that, that those those Troubles, no, those problems like uh, getting the, the channel. Well, you got the channel. I've shut had down. three channels, uh, three YouTube channels shut down. I've had my YouTube channel shut down. I've had I was banned from Bandcamp two weeks ago. CD Baby I had my website taken offline and my blog taken offline. So and yeah, my forum taken so offline. everybody, re everything everybody reposting your 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 videos oh, I or reposting everyone like to repost well, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I everything that is to, quality. Yeah, yeah. 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 And the last last question for like uh, this was from a brother Padma from Chile. He asked me uh, to, to ask you what is what how do you see like uh, you know how like all the ancient cultures have this common knowledge of the flat like uh, of the flat motion motionless uh, earth uh, and the Vedas too and uh, all the like all the scriptures too as as long as we know you know. So, so how, yeah, <laughs> it's a difficult what's, what's question. With <laughs> what's with that? <laughs> well, what that eh? yeah. what's but, it, no, I mean, it's a difficult it's, question to answer. It's universal if you go back hundreds and thousands of years that all across the world, through all cultures and all religions, all spiritual systems, all scriptures, mention a flat and motionless earth. Yeah. And not a single one mentions a spinning, rotating, revolving ball hurtling around the sun. We're the only ones! <laughs> We're the only ones. That's, that's a modern invention, but it's been so successful that in the past few hundred years, that modern invention has made it into the minds and hearts of literally every person on Earth nowadays. Well, the past few years, actually, that's been, that's been trailing off. But say up until 2014, that was 
I would say heliocentrism was the most successful covert religious indoctrination yeah. in history. Yeah. People yeah. were believing in a religion, He's basically, He's He's a religion. An outer space type religion, without even knowing that they were believing in something that had no basis in reality. If you listen to modern science, yeah. apparently we are now at the pinnacle of evolution and humans are the smartest and most developed that we've ever been. Yeah. But if you listen to ancient religious systems like the Vedas, they tell you the exact opposite, that we've gone to a devolution and we're now in Kali Yuga, which is the a devolved state. Uh, yeah, the lowest of, of the cycle. And uh, that's I, good. I tend to think that that's where we are. Um, and so. Uh, there's only, I think, there's only up to go from here. Yeah, exactly. We're at the lowest. We cannot be lower than this. You know, yeah. we cannot be worse than than what we are. Right. But at the same time, like I, I like your way of uh, living here in Thailand and uh, of like mixing. You know, not not just be a, uh, not just be on the computer or not just be on this because it's, it's a trap sometimes. You know, for me, myself, like I was sharing this with you and you were like, yeah, it's. Is we have to deal with these two forces. Like we were raised in a way, like we we have all these amazing technologies that they let us, you know, communicate and like you know spread these words. But at the same time, they can become a, a, like a roof that doesn't let us grow anymore. You know, a friend of mine said this about something like this was a was a step in my life that allowed me to see like so many other things that I was not able to see, you know, imagine having a step and you're too small and you have the step and then you can reach the window and you can see a whole world of different things. But then it became a roof that it didn't let him grow anymore. So I, I like that about, you know, your path, what you're doing of like, you know, balancing these two forces. And like, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say this. Yeah, no, no, I agree. I, we definitely, you know, with the digital aid, that, that is what, Kali Yuga has brought us is high technology. Yeah. Nobody can deny that. Yeah. We definitely have some of the highest technology metallurgy that we've ever had. But uh, has that brought us closer together really? I mean this, this level happier. or happier or um, more knowledge of Earth and the universe? I think if anything that's it's advanced the propaganda. So we're, we're now propagandized to the point that we don't know. Yeah, we're repeating up, up the propaganda. We are literally, they tell us, you know, we're broadcasting up is down yeah. and down is up. And <laughs> yeah. Motionless is spinning and spinning is not. Yeah. Uh, everything's turned on its head nowadays. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's important for us to, to use these tools, like I said, YouTube and everything. Uh, it's there for us. But at the same time, not to forget the natural world and personal relationships yeah. and, and, and our health and. Yeah. Kind of I was talking with my wife the other day and we were saying like you know how we think that we have to like disconnect from this system and but in real like when in reality there is a system that was already built it for us you know if we like understand like that the, the earth is actually flat and motionless that for me at least is my point of view it makes me think that we were, we are the creation of the creator mm -hmm. and if that's the case that make it really like a fundamental like really important what are we doing in this like you know we're center stage exactly. rather than just being some speck of dust in the fingernail of exactly. God's universe yeah. exactly so so it's not that we we have to like you know create another system there's already a system that it works and we have the technology of this uh, you know of this like a uh, modern world that we can use for our, our advantage so Absolutely. get the best out of all right. and, I think we're, we very well may be at a turning point because of that. You know, with, with the internet and everything, we have this level of information and communication at our fingertips. That if we do get active, and, you know, in spreading this to everyone, we were talking about. I honestly, flat Earth is the most important truth. Yeah. Because a, it unlike all other conspiracies and these kind of topics like JFK or 9/11, you can't go to. Dealey Plaza yeah, and find some go DNA 50 years ago and check yeah. if the thing was you know? exactly it's, it's you can We're debate about it endlessly whereas with the earth you can experiment and do your own no. tests and, and demonstrations tomorrow and the day after day, tomorrow forever, uh, yeah and find out that this is for real and then once you do find out that flat earth is real like you said it opens up this whole new doorways where the, 
you need to re-question a whole bunch of other everything, things. Everything, and from medicine to isn't economy. Isn't that what people need? Isn't that what humanity needs right now? Because we're, we're going in so many wrong directions about certain things. If you can have, like, a flat earth is like a wake-up call, kind of like yeah. a red pill or something like the Matrix yeah. analogy. Basically, yeah. it just blows your mind open, and now you become a sponge because you realize, I'm wrong about a lot of stuff. I need to find out what's right. Yeah. Unlike JFK or something, yeah. like everybody kind of knows oh, okay, that there's yeah. something fishy there, but they're never going to get to the bottom of it. Yeah. This one, it's super fishy, and you can get right to the bottom of it. And once you do, you realize that you're in an ocean yes. of bad smells. <laughs> yeah. Open the curtains right. and let the sun get seen. <laughs> so yeah, thanks so much, Eric. <laughs> thanks. Man. Okay, guys. I hope uh, yeah this was uh, helpful and uh, well take action then. Yeah. <laughs> Take action within yourself. A flat? Oh, I, I don't know. Should I? <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> Sayonara. <laughs> <laughs>